trusted with. Now, when it comes to the issue of which positions are available, and slowly we are going towards the question of eligibility. Before we check that issue, and before we look at the, the, the nitty gritty, yet very important details of eligibility, let's look at the question of languages. The question of languages in the EU is the key deciding factor these days of, uh, of EPSO exams. Why is that? Because ever since 2004 and the 2007 enlargements have been sort of uh, closed also in an administrative sense. So uh, EU officials from the, from the 12 exceeding countries have been phased into the institutions. There is no more national quota. Anyone from the EU's 27 member states who has uh, the citizenship of one of the EU 27 member states is eligible. You know, Croatia's accession will be a little uh, exception because there it's a it's a it's an uh, issue related to the to the uh, enlargement and accession. But here, for the current AST1, AST3 exams, we are looking at citizenship. Any EU citizenship qualifies. The question of first language is the one, and the second language is the deciding factor. So for the current exams, there are certain criteria related to the languages. The first language, by definition, requires a thorough knowledge. The word or the expression or the concept of mother tongue, it doesn't appear in EU official documents. And that makes perfect sense, because if you happen to have say Russian as your mother tongue because of uh, your parents or other reasons, and you have an EU citizenship, that would not make sense because Russian is not an EU official language. So a thorough knowledge of an official EU language is required. And that also means that if you are confident enough in a language which may not be your mother tongue, but you are very confident in English, and you pick that as your first language, you may do that. The second language, however, it needs to be different from the first language, and that should be a satisfactory knowledge. And in the context of the current assistant exam, this needs to be English, French, or German. So this is a little visual recap that the citizenship is EU 27, and here, which languages qualify in the current context. So for the AST1, the AST1, it can be Greek, English, uh, uh, Estonian, Finnish, French, Irish, Hungarian, or Italian as, as the first language. For the AST3, all EU languages qualify. So that will have a relevance on which tests you are going to take, not which test, but in which language you're going to take those tests. Citizenship, as mentioned, can be any of the EU's 27. And this chart also shows a very important piece of information, how many positions are available. For EST1, there are 257 in total. That's split according to languages. For EST3, there's a total of 152 uh, positions available. Application deadline, very, very strict deadlines, non-negotiable you cannot extend it by any means. And that also refers to the fact that uh, it's usually noon, so 12 o'clock, Brussels time. Do not leave it for the last moment. Do not wait until the last moment because of you know different time zones. You might be located at the other side of the world when you are applying, or uh, the server might be uh, overloaded. Do not wait until the 20th of December if you are applying for AST1. Do not wait until the 17th of January if you are applying for AST3. Just bear in mind these two deadlines. Now, the interesting thing to better understand uh, what I have discussed briefly a, a moment ago is for the AST1, the number of positions or the number of, of places on the reserve list available is split according to the languages. Because there's only one type of profile, one type of position, which is secretary. 
So the, these sort of uh, quotas are determined according to the languages. Whereas for the AST3, where you have the finance, the communication, uh, and the third one, there you, or the number of places, number of positions available, uh, it's determined according to the three profiles. Because the languages can be uh, any of, well, it's a mistake on the screen. I apologize for that. It's 23 languages from the 27 member states. So here is, uh, again, a visual recap. For AST1, you have 257 positions divided into eight languages. And these are the quotas that you see on screen. English 79, Finnish 26, uh, Irish 18, etc., etc., according to languages. For uh, uh, the AST1, the second language is English, French, or German, which is the case almost in every EPSO exam. So, in my previous example, if you're very, very confident in English, even though you are, say, uh, Spanish, and you're very confident in English, and you choose it as your first language, your second language must be different. So it, in that case, French or German, or if you are yourself, uh, have English as your mother tongue, or English as your EU mother tongue, and then you choose it as your first language, your second language must be French or German, in every case. For AST3, as I mentioned, it's a little bit different because the first language, it can be uh, any of the EU's 27 languages. And the second language, English, French or German, as long as it's different from the first language. Now, here's the number of positions. So the number of positions is divided according to the profiles, not the languages. And the financial management accounting has 62. Communication has 37, project program manager, uh, contract management has 53 positions, which adds up to 152. Now let's look at the question of eligibility. Eligibility for both assistant positions relate to qualifications and experience, meaning work experience. AST1. There are two types or two main categories of eligibility. One is that you have a secondary school degree and you have three years of relevant work experience working as a secretary, as an administrative assistant that you can show that you can prove that you were in that position. Then you are eligible. Or you have a relevant post-secondary education. And we asked uh, EPSO, what is their position on that? Like, what, what does it mean in practice, a relevant post education? And they said that it needs to be officially accredited by some sort of body. You know, the post-secondary education does not mean a university or any kind of college uh, degree. It means it's an adult education, but that is officially accredited as uh, administrative assistant or secretary or other. What, if you have such a qualification, then you are eligible without any work experience. Okay, so it's either a secondary school and work experience or a relevant degree, post-secondary, and no experience. For AST3, it's a little bit uh, different, though the, the underlying logic is, is, is quite, uh, quite similar. So for AST3, meaning to work as a project manager, as a communication uh, assistant, you need a secondary school degree and six years, de facto six years of relevant work experience. Then you are eligible. The interesting thing is that for the project management, it's quite a wide area. So today in so many jobs, if, you, if uh, your work necessarily includes project management. So if you have this kind of experience and you can prove you have six years, then most likely you are eligible for that position. And the other option to, to apply for the AST3 is to have a relevant post-secondary education, again, officially accredited in finance or media, uh, media, for instance, for the communication position, and three years of relevant experience. 
Okay, in that case, when you have the relevant necessary post-secondary education, you only need three years of experience. Okay, so very briefly, this is the underlying idea. Now you might ask, uh, who accepts the diplomas? Who says whether it's right or wrong? Formally, you would think it's EPSO. Legally speaking, it's the selection board because every exam run by the selection office, it, there is a selection board comprising usually three members and three substitutes. And they are the ones who make decisions. Sometimes they need to make ad hoc decisions because if somebody has a, a unique diploma, it's, that, it's for their judgment which has to be unbiased and objective. It's their judgment whether the studies, the courses that you had, would that qualify as a relevant post-secondary education. Here are three quick questions uh, from the large pool that we received. Can overqualification be a problem? Well, in fact, uh, this is uh, not a problem in the sense that it doesn't affect your eligibility. When it gets to the actual recruitment from the reserve list, you might be asked, what is your motivation to work in a position that might be uh, different from the diploma that you originally have? Which diplomas are accepted? I mentioned that it's the selection board's decision. When it comes to uh, officially recognized diplomas or when it's diploma, diploma, EPSO has a list of the titles that are awarded in each member state. But when it comes to relevant post-secondary education, as I mentioned, in most cases, it's the selection board's decision. And can an assistant, uh, one day, become an administrator, should she or he wish to do so and qualifies that? Yes, that is possible through two channels or two means. One is there is an internal system that's called, uh, I think, accreditation, not accreditation. Um, it has a special name, but there's an internal way to get a special training. You need to pass a special exam internally in the given EU institution. And if you qualify, you can become an administrator, should you wish so. And number two is you can apply for any open competition, just like any other EU citizen could. Now, a few words why it's a great opportunity, which is uh, probably known to most uh, of the participants today, is the salaries are very attractive. An AST1 position, depending on many factors, but approximately uh, leads to 2,500 euros a month net. An AST3 is around 3,200 that obviously depends on whether you are recruited from a different country, whether you uh, have family or child allowance uh, and many, many issues. But this is a ballpark figure to give you an idea. There are good benefits uh, because of family allowances, health insurance. There are European schools where, which provide education, uh, part of the education in your I almost said mother tongue, but uh, I, I stick to my script and say in your first language. And for children, there are various uh, other 